Welcome back to On to the Next Project. I'm Adam Krutinger. And I'm Brian Miller. And today we've got another interesting topic we're doing today. And what I wanted to talk to Brian about is, is about finding a business partner. I know we have different uh, ways in which we uh, have bi business partners, but I thought it'd be an interesting topic for us both uh, to talk about. Yeah, so I guess we should probably flesh out business partner. And I should also explain why you're not seeing my normal studio. I got a green screen set up for something later this week, and uh, I didn't feel like taking it down just, just for this. So that's why that's up. I hope you like my purple gradient. Um, so what do you mean by business partner uh, in, in this context? Well, uh, well, you know, obviously in, the, in my case, it's not a formal business because I don't even have a, a formal business. I'm just a guy on YouTube doing videos. But, you know, I think of, you know, uh, especially my relationship with Cameron Garrity, the co-host on my podcast, as a business partner. We've done a lot of work together, too, when we've uh, created uh, short films and commercials for companies, uh, which is, it sounds like a business, but we do it so sporadically. We've done like three in the last six years of co commercials for companies, so it's not enough to do a business. But again, we have a very business-like relationship and uh and, and you know especially we're also friends and also kind of not friends <laughs> like we're, we're really friends because of the business relationship whereas otherwise without that i'm not quite not that we don't get along necessarily oh like brothers we do right but i don't necessarily see us like hang we don't really hang out outside of you know doing the work that we love together Okay, two things. One, uh, this is reminding me of your, you and I, our relationship in the early years and how it, how it ebbed sure. and flowed. But two, it, I must apologize to the audience today. Adam, you have, you, your energy level is so far, is so through the roof right now. You must have just pushed past the point of exhaustion and you're making up for it with energy right now. <laughs> I'm an hour six of Zoom calls for today. <laughs> so, I Adam ran tomorrow. Yeah, you ran you ran the camp puppet uh, first day of week two, right of the second session, and you also did a puppet tears podcast today. And then I gave you an out, but you said no, we're doing it anyway. So you're doing that thing where you're like, I'm out of energy. So if I do this a lot, maybe I'll have energy. Yeah, it keeps me going. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that actually reminds me what you're talking about with Cameron. How you and I may have mentioned this at some point early early days, but uh, when we were you know in high school our entire friendship started really because of magic. And then we became great friends, but it was always entwined with magic. And we were really yeah. joined at the hip for years. And then when we went off to college and you distanced yourself from magic a little bit, and I was doing some other things and we kind of, it's not like we stopped being friends, but there just wasn't, we tried to hang out a couple of times and deliberately not talking about magic. And it was just like, what do we even talk about if we don't have this one thing? And it took us a while to find what the core elements were of of our relationship that has evolved in, into what into what this is, and we we have a somewhat business and somewhat per, and, and very personal relationship as well. So, do you want to dive into those kinds of relationships or more formal? Because I have formal business relationships with my manager of t almost 12 years, 11 years, uh, my agent uh, of, of seven or eight years uh, that started out as exclusively business. I met them as strangers, essentially as business, and they have evolved into family. So I've gone both ways. Sure, yeah, because uh, you know, as soon as you said that, I immediately saw the distinction, but then again, I still see the gray too, because like a, a business to someone who creates it is so personal. You know, so anyone you bring in, like you said, it is, it is, does become like family at some point, especially over time, but it's personal yeah. at any level because of what it takes to create something. Um, but I, but I guess less so f for our example of each other, because we were kids when we, when we, yeah. when we the, perhaps, but yeah, I guess more so from the perspective of like working with your agent and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it, it, it's been really interesting because I was introduced to Scott Tallarico, who is my, um, he's now my manager. Uh, he was, he, he owns Neon Entertainment, which is a national entertainment agency. Uh, he's the owner. And uh, when I was first introduced to him, I was just, a, I mean, I was still kind of a kid. I was like 20 years old and I had expressed to, uh, to the student activities advisor at my college uh, that I was interested in really pursuing magic, comedy magic at the time as a full-time career. 
and he had this long-standing relationship. They went, he went back to college with this guy, Scott, and Scott only took my email, my phone call, whatever you want to call it, on this recommendation. And he was very nice. And he basically said, when I first came to him, he said, send me your promo video. And I sent it to him, right? And you, you remember thinking how amazing you are when you're that when you're, when you're that age. And I was, I'm amazing. I'm going to be the next, the big magician I'm going to conquer. And I sent him my demo video and he wrote back and he said, well, when you get something better than this, get back to me. You know? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And it was like, and the thing is you always lead with your best stuff too, right? <laughs> right. That's the best oh, right, I had. Right. That's yeah. all I had. So basically, and, and he was really nice about it, but he said, here's the thing. He was like, uh, first, he basically said, this is what the market needs right now is X, Y, and Z. I need you to come back to me when you have a video that does X, Y, and Z. Because if you, if you don't, I, I can't even sell this. Like, I need something to start with. And he told me what it was. And one of the things at the time was he said it needs to be an HD. Because it was still was on the cusp. It was like 2008, 2009 like 720p, like high def, that was right, the original HD, that wasn't common. I still had one of those video cameras that took the little tapes in them. That's what I was still using. So I literally spent, I wiped out my bank account. It's like two grand. It was like all, I, I, which was a lot for a college kid, but I had saved up from magic shows and stuff. I wiped it out, bought a Canon Vixia, one of the early Canon Vixias that filmed in HD, bought my first road video mic, you know, the old video mic, um, all that early stuff. And, and I went out and I booked a bunch of free shows. And my, my, what I said is if you can supply me with an audience of at least 50 to 100 people, I will do a free show if I can film. And I did three or four shows, filmed, and spent the last penny I had hiring a video editor to cut together a three minute video. So I wiped out my bank account, spent two months working on this, went back to him with his video and he said, well, it's not great, but I can start with this. Yeah, yeah. You know, just to tie it back into, you know, the business partner thing too, you know, it's, it's even says something about your personality to not be turned off by that first message that he sent you because you know a lot of people are very especially again when we're talking about a business I, I mentioned earlier it's so personal you know it's like it's like someone calling your child ugly you know and you think it's the most beautiful thing and uh and people's you know again and i don't mean this in the way you know e the word ego can be such a triggering word for people too but it hurts their ego which is you know having your ego um uh, you know, it being told that it was good would have felt very good, wouldn't ha have, but it would oh. have been good for you. Oh, of, of, of course. And, and that's, I'm glad you brought it back to that because that, that's what I was trying to get to here, which is the, the heart and soul of what, what this relationship with Scott has been is me learning to trust him with my business, with my art, because he is not an artist, which is amazing. He's, he wasn't a comedian or a magician or a singer or anything like this. He isn't, he, he, his skill, he's like, this, he's like a Steve Jobs. He didn't do any of those things. His skill is he sees it. He can see an artist. He can pull a comedian aside and go, all right, so you're going to remove that line. You're going to put this in a different order. You're going to tighten this up. And that's the bit that's going to sell tonight at this gig that we need for that person in the audience who's considering booking you. And he's not a comedian. He doesn't do stand-up comedy, but he can do that. He can see it. Oh. And so, yeah, his, I, and I, again, I, that's the piece that a lot of comedians are missing, which is yeah. why you need that type of partner. And again, that's why me and Cameron, I think work so well, but you know what? Here it is. It's because we both have the same goal. We have such different uh, backgrounds, uh, skills to put forward toward that goal and um and ways of looking at it too that that we kind of you know finish the puzzle you know it's like the yin and it's literally the yin and the yang yeah and and that's that's exactly right and that that's what has evolved for at least me with scott over the years where i i went from being just just a kid who was you know good at magic and that's all you know a lot of promise um, I guess, or at least he thought so, because he took me on, right? At, 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 even though I didn't have the assets he needed, he considered taking me on. And then I, I failed miserably that first year. I did one of the first shows he booked for me that I got paid for. 
it went horribly. I mean, I bombed and I got a call from him the next, I thought, I thought it was over. I did this, it was like my second or third show he had ever booked for me and, you know, put his reputation on the line to put a young, aspiring, unknown, unproven artist. And I bombed. <laughs> Uh, just totally this and this was that they paid a lot of money it was a it was a college campus and that's a big ticket market and the next morning he called me and I thought he was gonna say you know well thanks for playing and goodbye you know because we didn't have a relationship yet but he said he called me he said what happened and I immediately got defensive well they didn't have this and the students that and this he goes hey, hey, hey that he goes what happened and I I kind of talked him through it and he goes all right, so what are we going to do to make sure that doesn't happen next time? And that is how he works. And for whatever reason, I trusted him. I trusted him early. And I learned after making one or two mistakes and then taking his advice next time, even there was one time I thought for sure he was wrong. I was convinced he was wrong, but I took his advice because I didn't want him to fire me. And uh, and he was right. And he was so right. It was ridiculous. He knew my art better than I did. And so, you know, and we've, we've built that into globe trotting insanity um, to the point where now once in a while, he'll ask me for my opinion on something he's working on, you know, and, and we've, we've actually, you know, we've built a really, a really give and take relationship. Um, but it started with, with pure trust. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that's amazing. No, and and again, just to you know, I guess to turn that into advice for people too, is that you you don't want to work with someone who just agrees with you, you know, because what are you going to learn from that? You know, kind of ties into what I was saying before, and also I, I guess I'd specifically say, be wary of someone who is just telling you how great you are and how much they want to work with you because, you know, as flattering as that may be, that's, you know, again, not to say it'll never work, but just be wary because, uh, you know, what can you learn from that? Well, and, and I think that the reason to be wary of that is someone who's only interested in how great you are is the same person who will drop you when you have a bad show or when you have a bad project or a failed You're not project. Great, yeah. Right. As soon as you're not great. Exactly. And, and what Scott proved to me and now, and that set a, a template for how I view all business relationships and even, even clients where I consider working with, or sometimes flat out saying no, when I reject working with the client who's willing to pay me and I say, no, I don't want to, I don't want to take that gig because I can sense that they're the kind of person who would turn on me the second something didn't quite go exactly how it was in their head. And, um, yeah, and, and so that's, that led me to really understand the value in, in not, and we've talked about this, um, the difference between advice and feedback. Scott mm. gave me advice right from the beginning, not feedback, not that noisy crap that blows everybody's eardrums out, but advice. And, and the, when you get advice, you know that that's a person who's genuinely interested in your success. It was clear he wanted me to succeed. And that yeah. he wanted to build a uh, he wanted to build a career together. There was a very much a we sense, uh, which is you know which which is what you want. That when I succeed, you succeed. When I fail, you fail. So we have to be on the same team here. Yeah, yeah. And again, just to tie back into that, you know, a lot of a lot of people that even even people that um that that just think you're great, it's, it's the same thing as as far as the game, you know as far as when you win, they win. But again, it's that same person is, will they be with you, you know, through, 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 through when, when you stumble, you know, and, and will you be with them if they stumble? It goes both right. ways, you know. I, you know, I, I wouldn't, I, I, you don't have to give an example, but I imagine that maybe there was a time when something happened where it was like, that was the wrong move, Scott. <laughs> you you know? know what? There uh, very few, but yes, of course, there there were there was an entire um, an entire semester at one point, uh, and I say semester because he mostly deals with the college market. Although now, because of where my career went, I actually pulled him very much into a new market for him that he's now expanded out. So we've again we've gone back and forth now, yeah. but. But back there was one time when I was probably in my mid twenties, and I was I was making it, but I was at that point, I was on that cusp where I was like making it, but not not a it didn't take much for me to not be making it anymore. You know, yeah, I was yeah. right on the line, not enough in the bank, you know, to, 
And out of nowhere, I had an entire semester that just had no events on. I was like January and I was looking at the spring semester and there was nothing booked, like two events. And I was used to doing like 20 events per semester. And I said, hey, I called him up. I'm kind of panicked. I said, Scott, there's nothing on my calendar. You know, I got payments and I got stuff coming up. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, for some reason, colleges aren't booking early this year. A couple of weeks went by. I called him. I said, Scott, I don't mean to bother you, but like, I know you got 50 other artists, right? I'm not his only artist. I said, I know you got, fit, but like, there's nothing on my calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no worries. I got a couple of things we're talking with. And it just went, and I ended up with only four events that entire semester. And I damn near went broke. And, and I, I was starting to freak out. And I had that thing, that spiral where you're like, all right, I clearly, this guy's not working for me anymore. I got to go find someone else. And I think that lasted about three days in my frustration. And I snapped out of it. I was like, no, you just spent six years with the, you know, the last six years with this guy. The, clearly something's happened. Yeah. We got to figure out what it is. And we talked through it. And he said, here's some stuff I could use from you, blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe if we change, we've been using the same marketing materials for three years in a row. Maybe we need to switch it up. Um, you know, and, and it, it worked out in the long haul. And I'm, I'm ashamed that I ever had that moment of doubt looking in, in looking back, you know, you know, it, it's, it's healthy to have that too. Cause it reminds me of when uh, we had one of our other talks, the topic of, you know, when the pivot and uh, because sometimes, you know, sometimes things are great and then sometimes they're not great anymore. You know, you think of marriage, no one gets married thinking that like, Oh, this is gonna, I hope, you know, I hope this, this might, this isn't going to go well at some point, you know? Um, but there's divorce and, you know, and, and in the same way, you know, you, it's, it's a matter of, I guess, understanding yourself and the person enough to see if, if this is just some sort of an oversight or a misunderstanding, or was it a, a, a true, uh, letdown? And even if it was a true letdown, is it something that you're confident is a matter happened as a matter of some sort of miscommunication rather than just them truly putting the focus on other priorities. Yeah. Which, you know, that, that can happen too. I mean, we're, we all have at different times, different priorities, you know, there, there was, you know, there was a time when I wasn't really that focused on the college market anymore because my corporate work was taking off. And at the time they didn't represent me for corporate. They only represented me for college. And I kind of, I wasn't blowing them off, but I was doing so much work and doing so well, so successful in this other market. I wasn't really focused on them anymore. And I was taking the gigs he tossed me when they came, but I wasn't doing the work, going the extra mile like I used to. And, um, and, and then all of a sudden, uh, again, it was like the second time that some of the gigs dried up. And I said, hey, where are my gigs? And he's like, well, where have you been? You know, you yeah. haven't been, you haven't, I haven't heard from you in six months. What do you mean? You didn't apply yeah. to this and you didn't do that. And so like, are we still doing this? And it was like, oh yeah, right. Yeah, no, of course. If I'm not giving you anything, <laughs> what, what do I expect? Yeah. It doesn't just, ha it doesn't just because it used to work doesn't mean it just keeps working or the same way. Yeah. It's a volley, you know? Yeah, yeah. you got to go back and forth playing ping pong. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've been, we've been stuck on my example for, for most of this time, which I, did, I, I didn't expect. What, uh, what, what do you have uh, from, from the point of view of working with, uh, working, I mean, you know, you and Cam have had so many, um, you know, so many, <laughs> I don't want to say ups and downs, but you've had so many different projects and, and, and I know you both, I know Cam a lot less, but I know you both and you have very different personalities. Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just, uh, you know, it's, we're an interesting couple, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's an interesting way to put it. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, and I think, you know, we're both very passionate and we both, uh, I, th I think what makes it interesting is that uh, neither of us make decisions lightly, even small decisions. And because of that, when a decision is challenged, it's not that I'm overprotective of it. It's just that, you know, and same for him, you know, as far as a design thing or whatever it is. It's just that a lot of times other people will assume, you know, that uh, you, you maybe didn't put much thought into such a small detail. It's like, no, no, no. I have a lot of thought into this too, you know. So it's a matter of just making sure that I guess what the most, most of our arguments are each other convincing each other about how thoroughly we thought of something. <laughs> and that, it, that it wasn't just a, a you know a, a, a frivolous detail 
that we just, oh, we need something here. So, and you know, sometimes it is. And he's the first one to call it out on me. And I'm the first one to call it out on him. And then we change it. And we're both glad that we did it. Mm-hmm. But that, our biggest moments are, uh, I guess, those examples of where, um, uh, yeah, just making sure that, again, it just comes down to making sure that we understand each other because we, we both care. About, and the fact that we're arguing about it is just proof to how much we care about it. Otherwise, it'd be like, oh, whatever. All right, let's let, let him do whatever, you know? Sure, and, and I think that that really just comes, comes down to, like, confrontation is this thing. Like, so many people try to avoid confrontation, and it's, there's different kinds of confrontation. Uh, you know, the, the greatest bands of all time did not get along all the time. Otherwise, music would be really boring, right? You know, it's got to come from somewhere passionate. And if you're, and the more passionate you are about something, the more likely it is someone's going to disagree with you, right? Because they're yeah. the only way to have people not disagree with you, just say something that's not interesting. Right? Yeah. Oh so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I imagine that if we're going to offer kind of parting advice here is if you're going to go into business with somebody else or go into something creative with somebody else, that confrontation can be great and arguing even can be great, but you have to first establish a, a caring relationship, a real, a real sense of understanding. You have to, you have to be, make sure that you've clearly understood where the other person's coming from before you disagree with them. I think that's where it, it comes down to. You need to know where it is. Absolutely. And say one more piece of advice I would just have to say too is you have to leave your ego at the door. Don't fight for it because you want it or because, you know, another thing, you know, a compromise that I hate is, you know, we always do, you know, we did your idea last time. So let's do my idea this time. It was like, that's a terrible justification. Okay. That's a way of justifying something bad. No, it's because it's not because of my idea. It's because I, I, I'm fighting for this, not because it's my idea. Because I think it's the right idea. And I just have to try to convince you that it is, or you have to convince me that it's not. You haven't convinced me that it's not yet. That's why I'm not, that's why I'm hung up on it. <laughs> you know, you know, what's so funny is I, I never really thought of it like that. It, it's, it's true. When I'm really passionate and fighting for one of my ideas, you're right. It's not because it was my idea. It's that assumes that that's the only idea I had. No, I had five ideas, four of my own ideas I already don't like. There's a bunch of my own ideas I've already gotten rid of. I'm now fighting for the one I think is the right. It's like that, <laughs> that you, you know, there's a bunch of ideas out there, and this is the one I collided with that feels right, you know? Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Again, it kind of goes back to what I said before, too. It's getting like, usually when I make a decision, it's not just on a whim. And that's why I, I, I passionately defend it, not because it's my idea, because again, I've really thought of the other options. I'm not saying there are no other ones. I'm saying like in my head, I've already gone through the Rolodex and this is a very thoughtful choice I made. I yeah. think this episode I think, laboring this, the point. I think this episode should be called like I was saying before. Because I think, I think that's like the eighth or ninth time in 30 minutes that you've used that phrase. It's like I was saying before. Yes. <laughs> I think you just keep reiterating the previous point. It's like we're going like this, and then we go further, and you're like, nope, we're coming back here again. And then... <laughs> yeah. Well, again, again, just one more example, I guess I'll just give out there too, is like, uh, you know, I, looking at comments and stuff on, on Instagram and, and and YouTube, uh, the ones I learn the most of are the ones that are critical. And again, I'm, that's not saying people who say mean things. It's people who are giving me a real critique, you know, just saying this was amazing and stuff. It's flattering. Great. I like it. I appreciate it. But it's not helping me grow. And that's what I look for in a partner and or someone that I just want to work with. That, that's, a great, that's, that's a great place to end. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, we'd love to know your thoughts and if you think we're completely wrong or if you have any things you think that we missed in this conversation about good attributes to look for in some sort of a business a partner or a fellow uh, creating re- relationship. <laughs> I think Adam's about I done. It. I think Adam's I done. done. <laughs> I'm out of I'm burning fumes now. Tell, tell us things like subscribe and all the things YouTubers say. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see you all next time. And until then, on, on to the next to the project. Next project.